Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the CD Guy, Johnny Z here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. And today, this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while on the channel. I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite progressive rock bands of all time. When it comes to prog rock, there are so many great bands out there. So everyone's list is going to be different, but these are just my personal favorites. So with that in mind, let's get started here with my number 10. I'm going to go with Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. One of the first great rock supergroups consisting, of course, of Keith Emerson from The Nice, Greg Lake of King Crimson, and you have Carl Palmer of Atomic Root. Rooster here. They released nine studio albums between 1970 and 1994, with my personal favorite being Trilogy from 1972, and they're really credited for introducing a larger audience to the progressive rock movement of the early 70s, and although they were an early punching bag for a lot of that anti-prog rock crowd and audience in the early 70s, you know, with a lot of critics initially coming down hard on them, calling them pretentious and overweening, ELP's unique brand of, you know, progressive rock fused with elements of, you know, rock, jazz, and classical music helped to really pack arenas and helped out prog exponentially, so for that, I had to include them here on this list. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, great prog rock band, even though they were, you know, beaten up upon pretty badly by the, uh, you know, music critics and anti-prog crowd when they, you know, were in their prime. Still a fantastic group, in my opinion, deserving of a spot in the top 10. Next at number 9, I'm gonna go with the Moody Blues. I just had to include them here on this list for their sheer influence alone, having influence the likes of of ELO, Yes, Genesis, and Deep Purple, just to name a few. I mean, you know, they're pioneers of prog and showcase one of the first ever examples of progressive rock on their 1967 record, uh, their sophomore album, Days of Future Past, and, you know, that re record really did fuse elements of, you know, the psychedelic sounds of the late 60s with, you know, rock and orchestra creating that prog rock sound, being one of the first real prog records, like I said. You know, so the band's classic lineup of Mike Pinder, Graham Edge, Justin Hayward, Ray Thomas, and John Lodge were visionaries for sure, in my opinion, and, you know, prog rock could have turned out very different, as we know and love it today, if not for the Moody Blues, which is why I'm including them here at number 9 on the list. Following that up now with my number 8, let's go with Genesis. You know, just like what I was talking about with Emerson, Lake, and Palmer earlier, they were easy targets for the 70s anti-prog rock crowd, but Genesis are definitely one of those enduring progressive rock bands of all time, initially fronted by Peter Gabriel before Phil Collins would take over vocal duties, in addition to being on the drums here after Gabriel's departure. You know, personally, you know, whether or not you prefer Gabriel or uh, Collins, as the vocalist and frontman for the band. There's a lot of great material to go around, so personally for me, I enjoy probably uh, Peter Gabriel's work with Genesis as the frontman a little bit more than the Phil Collins era, but whichever group you gravitate towards, again, there's a lot of great stuff all, you know, throughout their catalog to go, you know, to listen to, so with that in mind here, their influence can be felt all throughout rock and metal, even till still to this day, you know, from the neo-progressive movement of the 80s to, you know, Steve Hackett's impact on leg legendary guitarists like uh, Eddie Van Halen, Brian May, and Alex Lifeson, you know, Steve Harris of Iron Maiden, very much influenced by Genesis as well, so... Right, super influential here were Genesis, and like I said before, one of those enduring prog rock bands of all time, coming in at number 8 here on the list. Next to number 7, how about Jethro Tull? One of those unique prog rock bands to come out of the 70s, fronted by Ian Anderson, and you know, distinguishable by their uh, incorporation of the flute. Jethro Tull created a distinct sound for themselves, you know, really perfecting their craft, and combining blues rock and jazz fusion with folk and classical music to make something really interesting, as the band grew more and more into a progressive sound in the early 70s with classic releases like this one right here, Aqualung, as well as Thick as a Brick and A Passion Play. I'd say Aqualung is my favorite album of Jethro Tull's. It was the first Tull album I ever listened to, and I was hooked. But, you know, there are a lot of great records to choose from in their expansive catalog, right? They have 23 to be exact, with their 23rd Rock Flute being released this past April. April, uh, you know, the band are still going strong to this day. Like I said, Rock Flute released a few months ago. Great album, in my opinion. Probably one of my favorite prog rock albums of 2023 thus far. But, in general, Jethro Tull, absolute prog rock legends, absolutely belong here on this list, coming in at number 7. A great blend of progressive rock and pop. I guess you can call them progressive pop. My number six on the list, Electric Light Orchestra, did, in my opinion, their best work between 1974 through 1982, starting with the release of El Dorado in 74, and that's their fourth studio record. It's also their uh, first concept record as well, and that really helped to put them on the map, and in my opinion, that's where ELO became the mighty ELO that released some classics throughout the 70s, like Out of the Blue, A New World Record, and Face the Music. So for me, coming in at number six, I have to go with 
Electric Light Orchestra. Fantastic band. Break into the top five now with Yes. You know, Yes are a band that have undergone a ton of lineup changes and drama over the years, but their 70s output alone of classic prog essentials like Fragile and Close to the Edge secure them a spot in the top five for me. That era of the band is, in my opinion, their best work, so it's really annoying to me personally when, you know, you know the only Yes song ever played on the radio was Owner of a Lonely Heart from 1983, which is a fine song. It's not a bad song by any means, but it seems to be the only track in their catalog that anybody who listens to mainstream rock radio seems to know, you know, and that's all that mainstream rock radio ever seems to care to play from Yes as well, so... It's annoying to think that that's the only one song that people know from Yes, when there are so much, you know, there's so much great material from that 70s output from, you know, some of their best progressive rock works that don't, you know, get that don't get talked about enough, get passed over a bit. So, for me personally, I think their work in the early to mid-70s in particular speaks volumes to the fact that there's so much more to Yes than just Owner of a Lonely Heart, despite what the radio might tell you. So, here's a little bit of homework for today. The next time you're listening to classic rock radio and you hear Owner of a Lonely Heart, turn down the radio and listen to Siberian Katru instead. Next number four, I'm going to go with Gentle Giant. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to include them here in my top five is just because of how unique they were. You know, they were a band who knew the sophistication of their craft, knew how good they were at it, and because of that, let their music do the talking for them. You know, never, uh, you know, compromising their sound to appeal to a larger audience and competing for mainstream attention like, you know, a lot of some of the other bands here on this list, for better or for worse, moved in a commercial direction at some point in their careers. Gentle Giant never did that. You know, they never compromised their sound to appeal to a larger audience, but but, you know, because of that, they remain one of those underrated prog rock bands of all time, in my opinion, but absolutely belong in the top five. I mean, their debut record alone is one of those important and inventive in prog rock history, featuring lyrical complexities, right, frequent tempo changes, complex melodies as well, and multi-part vocal harmonies, just to name a few signature aspects of their style. So, that said, my number four on the list have to go with the wickedly underrated Gentle Giant. Top three now for my number three, let's go with Pink Floyd, and, you know, yeah, this is probably the most obvious pick here for this list, but considering the run of albums Floyd went on in the mid-70s, there's not no argument on my side that they belong in the top three for sure. The band first started out as a psychedelic rock group prominently, as fronted by Sid Barrett, but the band would follow the evolution of their sound after Barrett's departure and would move in a more progressive direction with atmospheric tracks, deep, complex lyricism uh, by Roger Waters, and stellar guitar work as well, so that's definitely seen on classic albums like Dark Side of the Moon, Animals, Wish You Were Here, Echoes, Obscured by Clouds, and The Wall, all of which, you know, I think are best enjoyed and, and listened to respectively as one, you know, consistent piece of music rather than isolating tracks. So, you know, whenever I do top 10s on this list of top 10 songs, top 20 songs, I really hate to isolate a lot of tracks from those records because, again, they're best listened to and enjoyed as one musical piece instead of, you know, separating songs. But nonetheless, every, every single, you know, one of the uh, records here from the 70s in Pink Floyd is classic and brings something different to the table. So for me, I absolutely had to include them here in the top three with that in mind. Pink Floyd coming in at number three here on the list. Next to number two, we have King Crimson. You know, King Crimson are to progressive rock what Black Sabbath are to heavy metal. Their debut album, The Court of the Crimson King, is a real pioneering moment in progressive rock history. And over the years, the band have endured a ton of lineup changes with Robert Fripp being the only consistent member throughout. But regardless of the lineup, the era, or the sound, King Crimson have always maintained a superior level of musicianship that puts them, you know, on a pedestal over uh, a significant number of progressive rock bands especially on this list so for me they're one of the all-time best and belong at the very top of the list with the exception of one band that is but before i can get to that one other band i do have a handful of honorable mentions to get out here so with that in mind honorable mentions go to renaissance the alan parsons project van de Graaff generator and then with a nod to the neo-progressive rock movement we have camel and marillion all fantastic prog rock bands but i can only fit 10 on the list here today but there can only be one and in my opinion the best progressive rock band of all time has to be none other than the mighty rush number one here on on the list. You know, the classic Rush lineup of Getty Lee, Neil Peart, and Alec Lifeson did some of the all-time best work in the history of progressive rock, you know, from their debut through the classic moving pictures from 1981, which is, in my opinion, in that period, the band did their best work. Their signature sound can best be identified by Peart's complex, well-composed style of drumming and killer lyricism to Getty Lee's piercing, instantly recognizable vocals as well. So, I feel like a majority of the Rush catalog, this album 2112 included here, you know, doesn't feel outdated at all, still sounds fresh, and I think in a lot of respects, the band were well ahead of their time, so that's why amongst the rest of this list, I think they have the most relistable qualities about them, which is why they're my number one here on the list. Have to go with Rush here, my favorite progressive rock band of all time. So that wraps up this list here, counting down my top 10 favorite progressive rock bands of all time, which should be visible right over here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below, turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss a new upload.
and let me know down in the comment section below what are some of your favorite progressive rock bands of all time. I want to hear from you. And also, would you be interested in seeing a sequel, me counting down my top 10 favorite progressive metal bands of all time? Let me know all that good stuff down in the comments. I really look forward to hearing your opinions. And until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, everybody.